Hi, I'm Brendan E. Reeb, CEO of Oculus. So we are here at CES 2015, and one of the new things you guys are demonstrating is VR audio. Can you explain what that is? Sure. So we have two categories of VR. There's PC VR, mobile VR. And here at the show, for the first time, we're publicly showing the Crescent Bay prototype, now with VR audio. And that's a huge leap forwards from where we were in the past, where it was just focused on really visuals. Now you actually have this, not just 360 audio, but you have full 3D. So you can hear a sound below you or above you. For instance, maybe the floor is shaking and you look down and you can kind of see it shaking as you're taking steps on it. Or a pipe bursts above you and you can hear it and it's an audio cue that'll cause you to look up and then see it actually happen. So it's really exciting to have that next level of immersion, not just visual, but now full 3D VR audio. Now gamers out there, you know, are familiar with 5.1, even 7.1 surround, but how does VR audio differentiate from what they're used to with their high-end speakers? So 5.1 surround sound, for instance, is still a two-dimensional plane that goes around you. So it's all, all the sounds sound like they're basically at your ear level. With this, you actually have, with VR audio, you actually have sounds below and above you where you have this full 3d audio so if you hear a sound down here you can look down and actually see it it's also actually using the HRTF the head related transform function while you're moving your head in real time it's manipulating the sound so that that sound sounds below you until you look down at it and then it sounds like it's right in front of you so in real time it's changing the sound that you're hearing we, we've never been able to experience that before until now and it really ties together and kind of completes the experience in VR. It's super exciting and we're happy to be showing it here, uh, both Crescent Bay and we're actually showing it on mobile on Gear VR as well. And speaking of Gear VR, that's now available for developers to be starting working on projects. Talk a little about that aspect and what role you see mobile playing for virtual reality. So we see two big categories of VR. The PC VR connected to um, kind of mid to high end computers, uh, very, very good performance and you have power plugged into the back and you can do this almost holodeck like experience and you'll see a lot of that big innovation, big leaps in feature set happen on the PC and then over time, pretty short amount of time, you'll see it come down to mobile where you'll have most likely a lot more scale. You'll get uh, a lot of the different phone makers out there. Right now we're very focused with Samsung, but I, you can only imagine that other guys are going to get into it. And you can really get that more casual VR experience on the mobile side out in a scale and a volume, um, which is really exciting. Our mission has always been to deliver the very best VR experience to as many people as possible. And so the best VR experience at that very high end will be on the PC and then to as many people as possible will largely be on the mobile side. Now if, uh, oh sorry, I'm gonna just ask the question again. I was, uh, when it comes to VR, when you look around at the gaming section here at CS, it seems like every company, there's all these new startups and new companies with VR. What are your thoughts about you know, the impact Oculus and as well to some degree Sony Morpheus has had on the VR space today? We're just excited to see everybody get into this. The more people that are talking about VR, the better. The more the industry grows, the more people get in and start making content. So if you have a company like Sony who got in at a fairly early uh, stage announcing Morpheus, that really helps inspire developers to go out and make great content, not necessarily just for Oculus on the PC or mobile, but also now potentially for Morpheus on the, on the console. So more people in the space, the better. At the same time, I think it's inevitable that there's going to be a bit of a kind of shakeout on the quality of VR that consumers really want and, and that they demand. Um, we're really pushing to lead that quality bar and deliver something that's very comfortable that ultimately de delivers the sense of presence. That's what we're always in this pursuit of presence, trying to make you believe that you're actually there. If you have some of those lower, uh, kind of less expensive versions of VR, uh, lower quality VR, um, they don't actually deliver the sense of presence. And that's something that I think over time consumers are going to be really demanding. And it'll be, we'll see what happens in the end, but uh, it's just exciting. More people, the better. There's been people waiting 30 plus years for VR to become a reality. How important is it to have everything exactly right when you ship so that people aren't turned away? Well, I, we've always said, or I've always said that I'm one of the most sensitive uh, users in the company, sensitive to any kind of discomfort or, or nausea. So we've really decided to push very, very strongly at a com delivering a comfortable experience. Uh, the more comfortable, I think the, the wider this can go and the more satisfied customers will be. When the average user goes and potentially goes into a phone store in the future and buys a VR headset, you want it to be a very comfortable experience. You don't want them to put it on and you know, some number of minutes later they kind of don't feel that good. You want them to put it on and 
30, 60 minutes later, they take it off and they just want to go back and do more. That's something that really Oculus is pushing very, very hard on. It's not easy. We're still in the very beginning of all this. It's kind of day zero, about to be day one when we you know, finally get a consumer product out there. Uh, but it needs to be comfortable. It needs to be a great experience. And so we're taking our time to, to get it right.